Okay, hello, if you are just arriving, we are going to wait a moment until we get some of our participants in the Zoom room. Welcome. Great. So welcome. So this welcome to the uh, Wisconsin uh, Virtual College Exploration Program sponsored by WACAC. I'm Mary Beth Petrie, the Dean of Admissions at Lawrence University and also the president elect of uh, WACAC. So um, I just want to welcome our participants and our speakers and uh, let everyone know that uh, for the participants, your camera and microphone are turned off. So the way that you'll need to ask questions is by typing it into the Q&A feature. Uh, if you just type it into the Q&A, then our presenters will be able to see it and you can ask your questions that way. You can also sign up for more sessions. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure that you can because this is uh, this is the end of our program. Um, so, uh, but you will be able to see our um, recording of this session as well as all of the rest of them uh, on the website wacac.com. So I will hand it over to our speakers today and I'll stop my screen share and let you uh, take over. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, and then present. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Colm Roman. I am the admissions representative for Kansas State University um, for the, the state of Wisconsin. So very excited to be here. I graduated from K-State in May of 2019 with my degree in kinesiology and a minor, or sorry, in athletic training and a minor in kinesiology originally from Garden City, and again, just recently moved to the Chicago area. But I'll let Antonio, who's also an admissions representative of K-State, go ahead and introduce himself, because um, he'll be helping me man the chat. So again, if you have any questions, go ahead and use that chat feature. Hello, everybody. My name is Antonio Vega, and I graduated in May of 2019 with my degree in kinesiology from Kansas State University, otherwise known as K-State. So. I'm here just helping Paloma uh, with the Q&A function today. Perfect. Thanks, Antonio. All right, let's get started. Thanks for being here today. Super happy to be able to participate in the Wisconsin Fair. So in this session, I'll go ahead and do an overview of the university, what life as a Wildcat is, admissions, scholarships, things like that. Um, but towards the end, I'll have more information about how to be able to connect with myself since I'm a Wisconsin admissions representative. Um, but I also encourage you to visit campus as well as set up a one-on-one -on -one with uh, with myself. I'm very excited to get to know our students, but let us press play. All right, so a little bit about K-State. We are located in Manhattan, Kansas. That's K-State's home. Um, it's also known as the Little Apple, not the Little, or not the Big Apple, sorry about that. We are the Little Apple and we are located in Manhattan, Kansas, and it's consistently one of the top ranked college towns in the country. You'll see it in my next slide, some of our different rankings. It was founded in 1863 as the nation's first land grant institution, and it's always the university's commitment to make education accessible for all. So some things about Manhattan, um, as a student myself, I got to enjoy some of these things, but um, we have different things to do, um, over 20 different museum and outdoor attractions. So this picture on the bottom that you see, that is Aggieville, that's our entertainment district. So there's shops, local shops, coffee shops, um, different bar areas. And then on the top is the Concert Prairie, which if you're more of a nighttime person and you want to take a hike, it's always a, a good time, a way to see the sunset or see the sunrise in the morning. But from Wisconsin, I know that's a little bit of a ways. We do have an airport in Manhattan, as well as a Kansas City one that's um, only about two hours away. We have a town of about 56,000 people. Our student population makes up about 22,000. So we have just very strong um, community ties as well. So that's just a little bit about K-State. And then this is the, what I was talking about earlier, some of our rankings. The things that are really important about these is that these are voted on by our student population. So our students are the ones who are voting um, on the 2021 Princeton Review for having our happiest students, being that number four town gown relations, which I mentioned earlier, um, being close with the community as well as K-State kind of being like one driven mechanism especially during like homecoming times. I know that's always fun and that'll be a very different, you know, situation this year, but 
the community always supports our, our you know, K-State, especially on game days, um, football days. You go to Walmart for whatever reason, everyone's going to be purpled out. Just a good time. And another thing is we have 16 Division One sports. So maybe some of you are familiar with our, you know, programs that you've seen um, on TV. So our football program, our basketball program, but we have all kinds of different sports. Again, we're a D1. And then, um, like I mentioned before, we do have this 22,000 um, student population. And another thing is in the classroom, because we do have 22,000 students, you're gonna get that personal touch. We have an 18 to one faculty or students faculty ratio. Um, you have about 29 students in a class is kind of usually what it is. Of course, it varies depending on course. And we always make sure that our students, you know, are on the road to be successful. And that kind of ties in with that 97% um, graduation placement rate, which means that after graduation within six months, those students that graduated are either landing a job between those six or after those six months or pursuing professional school. So some of them are going to go to med school. Some of them are going to start the master's, things like that. But so many things um, that K-State has for students, just being a part of the Big 12 Conference, um, having over 200,000 alumni worldwide, you can honestly find a wildcat wherever you go. Just a little bit about K-State to get it started. So yeah, I can go ahead and dive deeper. So going off of that, let's talk about academics. We know students are gonna go to K-State to find you know, the way to obtain that uh, degree to get their dream job. So, K-State has nine different academic colleges. They offer a variety of different degree programs. As you can see here, there's over 250 different majors and programs. Um, we also have over 50 different minors. Um, we have the College of Ag, the College of Architecture, Planning and Design, College of Business, Arts and Sciences, Engineering, Health and Human Sciences. And then we have two other colleges that are a little bit different and that's our Technology and Aviation, also known as Polytechnic. And that is um, going to be a little bit further than Manhattan. That's gonna be in Salina. I think that's like 45 minutes away. And then we also have our vet med uh, school and that is in Manhattan, but that obviously is our professional program. So lots of our students go to K-State, they'll get their undergraduate degree there um, and then apply to be to go to vet, vet school there as well. Um, but there's the really cool thing about K-State is that students really have the chance to customize that degree. So, you know, if you want to get a business degree, but then get a Spanish minor, our advisors do a really good job of making sure students um, take all the necessary classes and are prepared for graduation. Yeah, a little bit about academics. Um, we also have one um, open options program. I know that it can be a really big decision as you go through your college search process, not only to find what, uh, what school you wanna to go to, but then think about what degree do you wanna choose. So we have open options. Uh, students can come in to open options um, undecided and they can stay as long as two years in that program you'll be able to take different classes from different majors take career aptitude tests really figure out what you want to do before you know declaring that major but students can stay as long as two years or maybe in a month they've decided that they know what they want to do or in a semester they can always switch into the, the college that they want to be in but yeah lots of different opportunities to learn and then on the other side of things what is life as a wildcat? So how are students getting involved outside other than through academics? So K-State students, that's something that we really pride ourselves in is they're involved not only on, in academics, but also on the campus, the Manhattan community and across the world. So our students um, have the ability to study abroad in over 85 different countries, um, obviously maybe more during non-COVID times, but we have students that are consistently traveling abroad and also spending that semester, a year, maybe it's a faculty-led program, so it's only a week, but there are a lot of different opportunities for students to uh, travel abroad, and, and it is um, that in-state tuition cost or that cost for their, um, it's gonna be equal the same as if they were taking classes at K-State. And then with over 500 different clubs and organizations, our students are being involved more in depth within that specific program. So maybe there's a student who is in the College of Agriculture, and they were maybe involved in 4-H or FFA or some of those programs and they wanna continue. Um, there's competition teams that they can be a part of, such as the crops judging team, which my coworker was a part of it. Um, and Don Antonio, another coworker was a part of it. And they uh, were national champs for many years. So lots of different ways to get involved. There's also ways to get involved um, if you want to you know, be involved with skydiving club, Harry Potter club, um, I don't know, Antonio, what are some things that you did? 
So me personally, I was involved as a Wellcat ambassador for our Lafine Health Center, which is like our little like hospital here on campus. And basically what I did as a Wellcat ambassador, I planned events that uh, pertain to the well-being of other students. Um, in addition to that, I also participated in intramurals, which is like um, basically like competitive sports, like amongst other students in the university. So I played a um, uh, four, four or five years of intramural basketball and my little claim to fame here at K-State was that one time in a second half of a playoff game I hit four threes in a row and you would have just thought the whole gym was about to shut down so um, I do consider myself to be an intramural All-American here. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, so many ways to get involved. And if maybe there's something that you don't see that you want to be a part of, or there's something that you want to create yourself, you just have to find four other students, an advisor, and go ahead and register that organization. So lots of ways to, you know, be involved, make an impact on campus, whether it's a club in your academic area, university-wide honor society, student government, that's something that's also really popular. So in a high school setting, I like to relate that with um, student council. So making sure that uh, those are the ones that are going to be making the decisions. Our student government is completely student run. Um, they are the ones who are allocating money for organizations or, you know, maybe looking at our constitution, changing resolutions, things like that. Things that are going to, you know, help our student body. And like I said, that's completely student run. Um, the administrators don't have um, direct say, they're advisors, but the students are the ones that are going to have a voice and you can always run for uh, senators who are representing your own college. You can also run for student body president. Um, or you can sign up to be a part of different committees that are part of those um, allocations or a part of those advisories. But yes, lots of ways to be involved. And then another thing I want to mention is undergraduate research. That is something K-State really prides ourselves in because we are a top tier research um, institution. We have a lot of opportunities already that students can go ahead and ask a professor hey, I know that you're already doing research, can I be a part of it? And students are able to join and be a part of research as early as their freshman year. All they have to do is connect with that professor. And maybe that professor isn't doing research they wanna do. Our professors are connected, we have a great network. And so those professors are able to connect with other professors and you know, find what is gonna be that student's best fit as far as doing undergraduate research. But on the other side of things too, I know academics and involvement is really exciting, but we wanna make sure that our students are successful as well. And, it's, and how can K-State be supportive for these students? So different things that we do when we offer our free tutoring. So if you're just on the board there, you have a B and you wanna take it to an A, you can always go in for tutoring sessions. I know my freshman year, I joined a specific program that required me to go to tutoring. Um, I was terrible at math in high school, was really glad that it was required tutoring. And I ended up doing, getting an A in the class and also talking to my teacher. He was like, Ploma, you have done a really good job in this class. Do you want to maybe minor in mathematics? I said, no, not for me, but I'm glad that I was getting that tutoring necessary that was able to um, you know, do well in that classroom and, and beyond that as well. And then along with, or along with free tutoring, we do have different opportunities for help as far as like a writing center. So you need help writing a paper, things like that. Um, and then our Career Center. That is one of my favorite resources we have on campus. We have some great people there available for students, but they are available for mock interviews, for um, to be able to provide uh, resume critiques. They also have Photo Friday, where I think it's like the first and the third Friday of every month. Um, they open up uh, picture taking, so you can go in with your blazer, up upload that, or upload that LinkedIn pic that you got from them. Um, and then another one of my favorite parts is the career closet. So our career closet is open to students. Um, students are able to go, um, it's either gently used if not new because they do have an Am Amazon wish list and our um, alum and other people are great about donating, but students can go into our career closet, pick out two different items for free and then just take them. And that is something if, if you know, maybe you don't have the ability to get a blazer, you don't have the ability to get a tie, K-State has that selection for you at no cost. So a great resource. I know I've used it. Is that where you got yours, Antonio? Yes, and the blazer that I'm wearing now, so. Oh, nice. Look at that. We have a prime example of the Career Center being used. Um, another opportunity we have for students is our K-State First program. So that is going to be for uh, students 
in many capacities their first year. So we have the K-State Book Network, which is going to be a book that is sent out to all students um, that are incoming, and that's a good way for students to get connected. So if you have nothing in common or have never met this person the first week of school, you can be like, hey, did you read that book? Or I didn't read that book, but I mean, we got it kind of thing. Um, we also have a mentorship program through our Guided to Personal Success Mentorship. I just became a mentor. It's really weird since I just graduated from K-State, but I already uh, met my mentee and he's fantastic. And so um, I was a mentor since I'm already an alum, but we have alum, you know, that have been in the industry in a specific career that are able to be mentors. Um, we have alum that are connected through specific colleges. So I know, thinking off straight up my head, the College of Business has their own mentorship program, but that's one of the parts of K-State First. Um, we also have first year seminars, which is gonna be smaller classes for students if maybe they want more of that individualized attention. Although even our lecture halls, which are gonna have more students in, we do have a recitation where students will have that smaller class to be able to review that material without you know, the hundreds of students that are in that classroom. And then lastly, a part of K-State First is our CAT communities. So if students are wanting to kind of connect through a specific major. So maybe our CAT community in engineering. So these students will have three classes together. Some of them are residential, so they'll also be like in the same hall and get to learn together and get to connect. Um, so they might take a required class, like, um, I don't know any engineering classes, but like thermodynamics or public speaking and then tie it back into engineering um, in a separate class. So that's another way um, to build that community, to build that connection um, as they start their first year. We yeah, have lots of different uh, um, opportunities for students to you know, be successful. And all that goes to say, again, with that 97% job placement rate, um, employers are consistently looking for at our students because they are qualified and they are um, more than you know, just that degree. And I wanna talk more about that career center because of the career fair. So we actually host the largest career fair in the Big 12 Conference. It's a series of three days. It's one of the largest. And, and then outside of that, um, 900 global employers will come throughout the year. We always encourage students to get to go visit with these employers, whether it's for an internship they're looking for, or if they're wanting to land that dream job, it's always good to go even their freshman year just to kind of scope out and see the opportunities out there. But yes, college I know is a big investment and you should know that when you come to K-State, we're going to offer you a value pack degree and we're super excited and equipped to invest in you. But I know I've kind of done a lot talking. Um, Antonio, I want to pause. Do you know if we have any questions? No questions right now. All right, no worries. I hope that I'm still um, being informative and you know, giving you the information. But if you do have questions, again, Antonio is going to let me know and I can pause and go ahead and answer them. But let me dive a little bit deeper. So now we can get into the nitty gritty of what K-State admission requirements are. So these are going to be different in the past years. Um, so that's why I also wanted to include this. So if counselors are on, if students are on, you know what's necessary to be admitted to K-State. So for fall 2021, to be admitted to the university, you either need a 3.25 minimum high school GPA or a 21 ACT or 1100 or 1060, sorry, SAT, which is the same thing as a 21 ACT. If you have taken any kind of dual credit, you want to make sure that you at least have a 2.0, if that's applicable, of course, if not, like, not all students take dual credit, but that's just our basic admissions requirements um, to let students know because they have changed a little bit. So like I said, 3.25 or a 21 or a 1060 ACT. We are test optional because we know that right now um, it's a little bit difficult to take that ACT or that SAT. And then another thing I want to add, I almost forgot, we do super score for our scholarship opportunities and then and I will be able to talk a little bit more in depth about that because we all know that College is an investment, so how are we gonna pay for it? All right, so here are some important dates. So we have our general university scholarships. So these um, students will qualify automatically depending on their ACT and GPA and their application. So when you apply, given your ACT and GPA, you will, if you meet that criteria of that specific scholarship, it's automatic, it's not a separate scholarship application. But the only thing is students to be eligible for scholarships, they have to apply before December 1. That is our priority date, December 1, December 1. That is gonna be something that you're gonna want to remember if you're thinking about applying to K-State. 
Another scholarship opportunity is our K-State Scholarship Network or the KSN. So the KSN is the grab all or the catch all of every other scholarship opportunity at K-State. So say the College of Agriculture has some um, scholarships available for the students, that's gonna be found through the K-State Scholarship Network. Um, if there's a specific involvement or a specific club that has a scholarship for students, they can apply through that's also going to be through the K-State Scholarship Network. So that's going to be available for students who have already been admitted to the university and um, that will not be due until March 15th. So just another scholarship opportunity. The application is very simple. It shouldn't take very long. Um, and then another um, another financial opportunity is the FAFSA or the Federal Application for Federal Student Aid or sorry, free application for federal student aid that opens October 1st. We'd like to have students send their FAFSAs by December 1. And that December 1 date is just very important so that not only will students know of, an, um, of their scholarship before that December 1, as um, the financial aid will be sending letters depending on what scholarships students qualify for. So it's just good to have that financial information so we can send that award letter depending on this is what scholarship you might have gotten or you are eligible for this Pell Grant or these loans or work study or whatever that may be. But yeah, you can also find out more um, on this website below where it's uh, K-State slash SFA slash aid slash scholarships. Hey, Tell Mom, there's a yeah. question in the chat. Okay, do you mind reading it for me? Yes, the question is, are there any test optional scholarships? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so at the moment, I know that our financial aid office, as well as our admissions, they're talking about it just because of the situations. At the moment, we still are requiring that test, but given that the ACT and the SAT keep getting pushed back, we understand that there's going to be change and, you know, we're going to have to see um, scholarships a little bit differently, um, but there has been no official announcement yet. But um, I know that I will be able to collect um, information later um, and be able to give an update. Um, we are consistently updating our personal website. So if there is a change, we will let our students know if whether what else, you know, what other materials we might need to qualify for that scholarship. But good question. Any other questions, Antonio? Gotcha. So I do want to clarify though, for the general university scholarships, that's what we need that test for. But for the KCA, um, this case, the KCA scholarship network, that doesn't necessarily involve, um, it doesn't have to necessarily involve an ACT or anything like that. That's gonna be, depending on what you answer, whether you were a student who was in this program or you're in the College of Ag or you know other things that make up what your profile would be at K-State. So just wanted to clarify that. Good question. And then speaking of scholarships, I did wanna dive a little bit deeper into our Midwest Student Exchange Program. I don't know how many people are familiar um, with it, but it is, applicable to a few states, including the state of Wisconsin. So the Midwest Student Exchange Program. A student may qualify for this program if they have a minimum of a 3.25 high school GPA and a 22 ACT or an 1100 SAT. So if you have both of those things, you would be eligible to pay 150% of in-state tuition. I know that's really weird, uh, a way to format it, but basically um, if you averaged it, say a student is taking um, 15 credit hours a semester or 30 credit hours a year, that would look like an $11,000 award just based on the averages. And then, um, but again, if you take more credit hours, the um, like the percent or like the scholarship offer would be bigger. If you take less, it might fluctuate a little bit. So that is another way um, for students to be able to qualify for that, for that scholarship and um, kind of get that uh, out-of-state out tuition closer to that in-state tuition. And I also want to mention the two add-ons. So say you uh, qualify for the um, Midwest Student Exchange and you have a higher ACT and a higher GPA, as you can see on here. So say that you have a 3.5 high school GPA and a 25 ACT, you would not only qualify for, say for that $11,000 award through the, um, through the Midwest Student Exchange, you would also qualify for an additional 1,500 scholarship award every year, as long as you keep a 3.0 GPA while at K-State. Or say that you have a 3.7 uh, high school GPA and a 20 ACT or 1310 SAT, you would have a $3,000 additional award to that Midwest Student Exchange, again, renewable, as long as you kept that 3.0 GPA. Any questions about that? Because I know it can be a little bit tricky on the way that it's explained, but in general, the Midwestern Exchange Program averages about, um, just without the add-ons, the, the regular 150% um, 
150% of in-state tuition averages about $44,000 of a total award for all four years that you're at K-State. Yeah, just wanted to touch base on that a little bit more. Again, um, don't hesitate to clarify um, more about that. All right, so here we are coming to a conclusion. So I just want to tell you guys to remember to visit, connect, and apply. So I know it's an interesting time right now and Wisconsin is somewhat of a ways from K-State. Again, I mentioned we have airports nearby and I think when I Googled it, it was about an 11-ish hour drive just depending on what part of Wisconsin you're at. But um, we have just started our in-person visits. If you did want to go visit campus, there are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. In person, you get to connect with an academic college, an admissions representative like myself, and also get to choose to do maybe a campus tour, maybe meet with our leadership program, um, things like that. Kind of get to customize a little bit so you get to still see what campus is like. And then again, we also offer some virtual visits. If you have any questions, you would also get kind of a welcome session with someone like myself, get to break out into um, your session with um, an academic college, and then also take a virtual campus tour. And those virtual campus tours are, said, uh, are led by our student workers. So our student workers will kind of walk you through. Um, they love um, being able to you know, talk to prospective students and, and kind of like why they were here and, and what is gonna be our students or our prospective students best fit at K-State. Um, so just kind of a good way to connect if you're wanting to learn more about the university or see a little bit more anyway. And then another thing, um, did I just see another chat come in, Antonio? All right, you can go ahead and ask me. Yes, yeah, so this question is how much does it cost to go to K-State? Uh, okay, yeah, great question. So as an out-of-state student, there's also a web page you can check out and we can explore a little bit more after this presentation. I can go online and show you guys a cost breakdown. Um, bond average tuition and fees for an out-of-state student is gonna be around $26,000. Again, if you do qualify for that Midwest, that might drop it down to like $14,000, um, a little bit more than that with the add-ons, but out-of-state tuition is about $26,000. Um, for a whole year. So you can divide that by two and that's what you would see for a semester. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, of course, there's gonna be, um, you know, what is a housing plan gonna look like, a meal plan? That's why there's no direct, um, I guess, equal amount just because students get to choose their own experience and what residence hall they wanna live on, um, what college they're in and their, their, specific fee, their specific fees, things like that. But just tuition and fees, um, are gonna be about $26,000 a year or per 30 credit hours on average. Was that the only question, Antonio? All right, but it was a great question. And then another thing that I want to invite you to is having that one-on-one -on -one opportunity to meet with myself. I know I've done a lot of talking today. I'm just wanting to present K-State to you guys and um, let you guys know a little bit more about it, but I'm more than happy to set up one-on-one -on -one sessions they're gonna be on Zoom meetings, um, but you can uh, schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with myself uh, by going to this site where it says calendly.com slash Paloma. There are about 30 minute sessions if you wanna meet um, as, a, as a counselor, as a student, as a student with your parents, I'm more than happy to meet and answer any questions that I might miss while we're here. And then lastly, I also want to encourage you guys to apply. Um, to apply, you can, we have a, a native app and you can just go to our website to kstate.edu slash admission slash apply. But I know that a lot of schools in the country use the Common App. And so we are on the Common App if you want to apply that way. And then once you've applied, um, I think it takes maybe 40, 30 minutes to finish the application and you should receive an admissions decision within two weeks and you're gonna be notified of that admissions decision via mail. So be checking your mail uh, within those two weeks after you've applied. But yeah, so lots of great information for you guys here. Um, I'm really excited that I was able to visit with Wisconsin students. This is the first time I think K-State has been able to um, kind of reach out, especially through like the state of Illinois. And I'm really excited to be here and happy to answer any questions. Thanks very much, Paloma. That was really great. Thank you. I'm going to um, share one more time um, just to remind everybody that um, there is a quick survey that, that they'll get right after this session. It would really help out uh, both the organization putting this on as well as Paloma and Antonio to have your thoughts. Um, 
And don't forget that you can go to WACAC.com to see the session again, review any points that you might have missed or that you need to go back to, or um, visit any other sessions on the recording. So thanks. That was great. I love your background, Paloma. That's a really beautiful sky behind you. This is Anderson Hall, um, one of our administrative buildings, but it's really iconic because when you graduate, you go with your friends or yourself, and that's where people take like their senior pictures. Oh, yeah. I can see why. That's really mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a, have a great evening. Thank you. You too.